Today in Elden Ring, I'll be showing you where to obtain an incredible mage armor set easily. And also we'll be getting some hidden spells and weapons as well. Skip ahead for the location, but the Fire Monk armor set is arguably better than the Black Flame Monk set, and also much easier to obtain. Here are the Fextra Life stats side by side so you can compare. Both armor sets have the same weight, However, the Red Flame Armor set has a higher overall physical defense and an even higher magical defense as well. The Black Flame Monk set has slightly higher resistances, but it is a much less useful stat. So overall, the Red Flame Armor is statistically better. It then really comes down to personal preference of what you like more. These armor sets are obviously on the heavy side for mages and clerics though, so it depends on your build if you'll be using these armor sets early on or not. In this video we'll also be obtaining one of the best maces in the game, the Monk's Flame Mace, as well as the Briar Sin Sorcery location and the Cleansing Flame Incantation and the Monk's Prayer Book. I'll review each one of those spells and weapons at the end of the video, but first let's get the Flame Monk's armor set. As for the farming spot location, I'll show you how to get here in a moment step by step, and you can skip ahead if you already know how using the timestamps below. But we'll be coming to this resting spot of Grace North from the Artist Shack, just here at the Eastern Tableland. This is the farming spot location. Now I'll show you how to get here and unlock the map as you do so. After doing the tutorial, you'll start the game here at the first step resting site. From there, you're going to want to go northwards to the church where you meet the merchant, and then you carry on going north, and you eventually come to these ruins called Gatefront Ruins. And just over here is where we're going to start at the Gatefront Castle Gates. From the Gatefront Ruins, you're going to want to come west down this pathway just here, all the way to the north, and you'll find another resting spot just here. So we're going to put a waypoint there. And then just to the north of that, you're going to come underneath this huge bridge. I'll put another waypoint just there. And then, continuing on from that bridge, you're going to find a broken bridge, which is going to be like a dead end. So now let's go ahead and ride that first section through the gatehouse here. You're going to want to just ride your horse into Stormgate and sort of dodge to the left and right and watch out for a monster that drops down a giant from above. And then we're just going to continue riding onwards. It's a pretty easy area just to run through, so I wouldn't really worry about this at all. Now, when you reach Stormhill, you will get attacked by some wolves that jump down from the cliff edge. So run slightly to the right there and they won't hit you. Then just over here you'll find that resting spot just where the waypoint I placed was. And now from that resting spot we're just going to carry on heading north underneath that giant bridge that I showed you on the map. And we've already got our waypoint number two located just over there. So we're going to continue off the stone path onto this dirt track here under the bridge and just carry on going. Pretty easy, to be honest. A lot of people seem to think that this is a higher level area and you can't go here earlier, but you can go anywhere you like in Elden Ring. It's an open world game. So we're going to continue on to the end of this stone bridge here, which has fallen away. You cannot go any further. So loot this tarnished and now as you can see we're at this broken bridge what we need to do now is we need to put another marker directly to the left here and then to the north we're going to follow this wall that we can't actually see around put another marker there and then just to the left here you can see this part of the wall there's a little circle just to the north of that put another waypoint that's just like a rough guide of where we need to go next so from this broken bridge that we're on we're going to come down here because we can't get across any other way and we're just going to climb up this sort of rocky terrain here and it's actually going to lead us on a pathway it's just like a straight pathway it might look a little bit confusing to follow but it is literally just a straight pathway and just head all the way along you'll come across a couple of low level wolves that are not going to be a match for you battle brother you can just run past them though if you are afraid and i will not begrudge you if you are keep following it around following the cliff edge all the way and eventually you'll get to the lake and you can see right where I placed that third waypoint, this is where the area of grace is. Now you're going to be here on the map at the lake facing cliffs resting spot of grace, just beyond the castle over here. So now if you look to the northwest, you'll see this sort of glowing runestone in the distance. This is actually the exact location where the next map fragment is. So we can put 
a map marker there. We don't actually need to go there because it's in a different direction. We actually want to go this way. But if you get this map fragment, it actually unlocks this whole area of map to the north. So I actually recommend that you go and pick it up anyway. So from this resting spot, we're going to come behind us. There's a little path there. We're going to follow this path all the way down here. Um, and yeah, we don't actually need to kill anything. So we just sort of carry on riding. And we ride all the way down this path that goes through the valley here. And then you come out onto this open plain. You'll see there's sort of a bandit camp up ahead. Now you can ride directly through it if you want or you can just ride around it it really doesn't matter that there we go we rode around it and you can see right ahead here there's actually another resting spot of grace and i recommend picking it up before going into this next area so go ahead and activate this one and now we're just going to continue heading to our waypoint which is in the waters just over here there's a few enemies in the water so don't hang around that is the stone tablet that has the map fragment on it let's pick up the map fragment just there and now your map will look like this as you can see we've unlocked the entire northern section just here so now what we're going to do is we're going to fast travel back to the lake facing cliffs. Once here, we're then going to put a waypoint to the northeast, just where this little ruin is over here. And then you're going to follow where I go. From the resting spot, just come over here to the north and look off the cliff edge. And you'll see there's these giant sort of gravestones. The best way to do this is just sort of walk off. And then if you're not going to make it, tap the A button and you'll do like a double jump. And then just go ahead and jump down like that. I'm just going to continue off until we reach the bottom over here. And then we're going to head north over to our waypoint. And we're going to find another resting spot of grace. Just where we put that little marker directly to the north of where we drop down. So you can see it just over here nearby that ruin. And we're going to grab this. You can now see we're here on the map on the Lernia Highway South. Now we're going to go directly north up this path. We're going to put another waypoint marker just here. Then we're going to go up this hill over here all the way through this woodland. Carry on going past this sort of tower until we reach this location over here. So you can see that's the first waypoint just in the distance. Let's just head literally down the path. I mean, you cannot get lost. It's kind of straightforward. We're just heading straight over to those waypoints we already marked on the map. Ignore all the enemies here, though. Through the trees here. So we reach this first waypoint where there's a fork in the roads. And also, you will spot that there is another resting spot of grace just here that you could pick up along the way. So now we're just here and we want to go right up this pathway and through that woodland and to the artist shack. So from this resting spot, make sure you go to the right, otherwise you'll get to a bit of a dead end. And we're just going to pretty much follow this kind of brown dirt pathway just in front of us here, all the way over there. And by the way, if you keep tapping B on horseback, it's actually slightly faster. Just keep following the pathway through the forest and you literally cannot go wrong. Ignore this giant crab. But if you too would also like to join our secret sun god cult, where you can worship the sun in peace, you can now represent with the new merch linked below. And it also massively supports the channel. And now we can see waypoint two over there in the distance. There is a bit of a mini boss over here though, so we're just gonna go to the left to ignore him completely and jump over these rocks here and just keep heading northwards to the second waypoint that we set over there in the distance. And you can see on the hillside there is the artist's shack. So now from the artist's shack, we're literally going to go all the way to the north here. And there's going to be another resting point of grace just here. There's also a fire monk camp over here, which you can farm. But there's actually a better farming location, which I'll show you in a moment. And once again, we're just going to go directly north from it. You'll see... But there's kind of like some rocks outcropping from the cliff edge here, um, which allows you to cross this giant canyon below. So we're just going to run across here and you can literally just drop down, but just make sure you don't drop down to your death, obviously. And then we can see our waypoint marker just there in the distance where the pathway is. This is one of the fire monks camps to the left. There's going to be one fire monk that you can farm for the armor set there. 
but it's actually rather annoying to go that way. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to get this resting spot of grace just here. And this is going to be where we start our farming location. So we are located right here on the map at the Eastern Table Hand. And I've just showed you guys how to actually get here. But now what we're going to do is from this resting spot of grace, there's two farming locations. The best farming location is just down the hill here where there's a fire monk and a retinue of a couple of enemies. The second farming location is at the fire monk camp where there is another fire monk that you can farm and some other additional treasures and incantations that I'll show you guys in a moment. However, this guy is a lot closer and easier to access. So I recommend just farming this guy to make this method even faster. So from this resting spot just here, we're literally going to go down the pathway down the hill and you can already see the fire monk located just in the distance here. Now from horseback, it is actually very easy just to sort of ignore all these guys' attacks and they're just not going to be able to hurt you. And then you can just dash away whenever they're about to use an ability and they're pretty easy to kill as you can see. Now we have the Fire Monk Gauntlets. So now we're just going to run back to the resting spot of Grace at the top of the hill and we're going to repeatedly do this farming method. However, there is another option which I just want to quickly talk about. You can rest at this resting spot or alternatively we can go over here to the actual Fire Monk camp which is located just here on the map. Now just to quickly demonstrate, if you just want to kill the Fire Monk himself, I recommend just running around the back here. And then he's going to be walking in and out of this entrance just over here. So you can bait him out without killing any of his friends or followers just to make your life a bit easier. Now all of the fire monks will drop the fire monk hood, the fire monk chest armor piece, fire monk gauntlets and the fire monk greaves but also the monk's flame mace as well which I'll talk about in a moment. As for the rest of this campsite though there are actually a few more enemies in here that you can kill and all of them drop smoldering butterflies and there's also some hidden loot in here that you can find as well just on this guy's corpse the flames cleanse me which is honestly one of the most useful miracles in the entire game. Talk about it in a moment and then just by this brazier, you have the fire spermy emote. And then just behind this little sort of wall here, there's another body. And on it, you'll find some smoldering butterflies. Now, I don't know if this is a bug, but I have noticed after farming this location 50 times that this particular fire monk never drops the fire monk armor chest piece. However, after farming this location, the Fire Monk Camp, which has one Fire Monk in it, I only farmed this location 10 times, but 3 out of those 10 times, the Fire Monk chest piece was actually dropped. I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but it seems to be the case that this guy doesn't drop the chest piece and this guy does, even though they're the exact same enemy. But also another sorcery you can get in this location is just south over here, right in the corner of this rock face. Put like a little waypoint just over here. There's actually another sorcery I can pick up just outside the camp. So I'm pretty much gonna go directly outside and then I'm gonna go south. And you can see there's a character here standing with a staff that's on fire. We're going to go ahead and kill this person. Now the Briars of Sin is a really weird spell that doesn't make any sense to me. It's essentially a sorcery that doesn't use any focus points to cast, actually uses your health. However, it requires 24 faith to actually cast in the first place. And even more strangely, you can only cast it with a star, which means you need a certain level of intellect to actually use it. So as you can see, I'm going to come up to this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and cast a spell and my health will go down and I will deal some damage to it. It also costs stamina, obviously, but you can literally spam this skill repeatedly like this. And it stacks up your bleed and you'll continuously do damage to yourself. So yeah, let me know in the comments section if you figured this one out. Uh, it's to keep yeeting yourself in the stomach and pretty much until you die. 
Oh yes, that's the stuff. Next we have the Monk's Flame Mace, a great hammer made to resemble the flickering flames, a signature weapon of the Fire Monks. Now this is actually the highest physical base damage mace weapon in the game, included in the hammer category. It has a scaling of D in strength and C in dexterity once fully upgraded in the standard way, so it is a very decent weapon. The description also reads that the unique strong attacks rouses a fiery combative spirit spirit which uh, it doesn't actually have any gameplay effects whatsoever but it is definitely unique i'll show you in a moment so as you can see the strong attack um looks pretty normal right like it's just a pretty straightforward ground pound directly in front of you with a mace weapon however if you hold it down <laughs> you do this this sort of dance move i don't really know what purpose this serves other than you charging up the strength of your <laughs> it just looks so silly but it doesn't actually have any gameplay effect and then obviously we have the light attack which is just straightforward swipes in a combo of five before it does a particularly heavy attack at the end of it, it does a bit of extra damage though while using the weapon you do have access to the kick skill which lets you break enemies guards like so and then you can just follow through with a finishing critical attack then obviously we have the jumping power attack and then the jumping light attack and also the sprinting light attack and the sprinting power attack. Next I'm going to be showing you how to obtain the Fire Monk's Prayer Book for some additional fire magic incantation. We're going to come back over here to the lake facing cliffs and then to the north to the Leonia Lakeshore resting spot that we already discovered earlier in the video. Once we're at this location, we're going to follow this cliff face all the way along, putting a few waypoints on it, until we get to like this area where there's like a path and the cliff stops. There's another fire monk shrine just over here. So from this resting spot, we're going to walk past the merchant over here and we're just going to keep this cliff face on our left. And then we're going to run all the way down the cliff face. And you literally just cannot go wrong. Eventually you'll come out in this area where it gets a bit more open. And you'll find another fire camp. Now this is a much worse area to farm if you're wondering. Since it's so far away from any resting spots. However, within, specifically, right in the center you'll find the Fire Monk's Prayer Book. So if you open up your inventory and you go to key items, you'll find the Fire Monk's Prayer Book. It can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations. O Flame and Surge of Flame, two different spells. So now we must fast travel to the Round Table Hold over here in the corner of the map. If you've not unlocked it, you just need to rest at the resting spot of grace and then a character will appear who will take you here. So once you have arrived, just come over here to the prophets. Oh. You'll now have the option to study incantations or give prayer books that you find throughout the game. So we're going to give the monk's prayer book to him. That is a work of heresy. <sighs> very well study incantations and now as you can see we've unlocked two more spells surge o flame and o flame so firstly we have the surge of flame which is really effective since it actually staggers enemies that it hits repeatedly meaning the ones with the lower poise will simply just be stopped in their tracks until they slowly die to the fire if you're not locked on as well you can actually spin around to bathe the entire area in flame staggering any foes in the area the focus point cost however is very high for the amount of damage it actually does which makes the spell feel rather lacking Though it is slightly more efficient if you channel it and hold it down. Still though, it's not enough to make it onto my spell bar. Next we have the O Flame spell. Unleash a burst of fire directly in front of you, costing 10 focus points a cast. And it can be channeled for a mini fire nuke as well. Which is more cost effective, but the range is rather short, so you have to kind of time it correctly. It can however stun the target that you hit leaving them open for a critical hit. I think if it gets a further cost reduction, it will be more useful as a incantation. Right now though, I just stick to Catch Flame because there's a better spell, since it only does 20% less damage, but for 60% less focus point cost. So it's just hands down a better spell. Now Flame Cleanse Me is one of the best utility spells in the entirety of Elden Ring. It requires 12 faith 
to equip and what it does is once cast it will burn away any poison or scarlet rot or that's building up currently on your character or even if you're already poisoned it will completely remove the effect from your character as well completely burning away all of the toxic and it only costs 14 focus points to cast so you can really spam it whenever you're in an area of scarlet rot or poison if you found that helpful drop a like and you can check out more mage guides linked below